Hi, this video is to show you how to cast off a rectangular loom if you're doing a flat panel. So I'm going to actually use a smaller loom as an example just because trying to get this whole thing into the shot would be a little tricky. I live in a small place, I don't have a lot of space to make videos in. But what you're going to do, and I'm going to show, like I said, you've already gone around, you're getting to the end and you're like, okay, now it's time to take this off, how do I do it? So what I've already done is prepped this loom, as you can see. Not that far down because again, this is just for a show. Now, you'll see how I did it too. Let me back it up a little bit. Obviously, you do not wrap the middle peg down here. You're just doing a flat panel. So you just work your way back and forth, obviously. So when you're ready to cast off, it's one of those, well, how do you do it? Well, first you're gonna get yourself a crochet hook. Now I have two different sizes here. Um, this one's a little bigger than this one. I tend to favor the littler one, which may not always be the best one. Basically, figure out which size works best for you. Certain yarns might require a certain one, but I go by what's more easier for me to use. So you're going to use this one. If you need it, which I don't usually do, you can use your hook that came with your loom to take the stitches off as you're doing it. But all you're going to do is you're going to take your crochet hook, and where you started, as you can see, I started over here, you're going to take this loop off and put it on your crochet hook. So go ahead and do that. So it is on your crochet hook. Now, some would, I made the mistake, one of the first blankets I did, of immediately picking up the second stitch and putting it on and then pulling the back one over the top. Don't do that when you're doing a blanket because it creates a tighter stitch at the end which doesn't exactly mimic when you start the project. It won't be as loose as it already is coming out. So what I learned, and I don't even remember where I got this from, is you're going to take your yarn because you still have your yarn attached, so make sure you have a pair of scissors handy too. So what you're going to do is take this yarn that's already on there and you've got your crochet hook and you're just going to loop it around it, making sure you can see that, and bring that through the loop that's already on it. And that's called one chain, I believe. But because it's a baby blanket, I found out that I like doing two of those before I go on to the next loop. So do another one and pull it through. It's a little tricky to show on camera. Okay, and so now you get the two hooks on and you can kind of tighten a little bit. Now you'll pick up the next stitch that's down here and put that on your loom or hook. Okay, so make sure, and I use two strands of yarn for this, so make sure you get both strands. But this will work with a single strand too. So now again, you've got, oops, I lost that one. You've got two on there. So again, you're just going to take the back one over the top one. And then you're going to do your two chains with this again. So you're going to wrap it around the hook, oops, make sure you get both strands if you're using two, and bring it through. Okay, so I did one again, make sure you do two, because if you mess up and only do one in between here and there, it'll kind of look awkward. So then you're going to do two, okay, and making sure they're both on this, so that's the second one I did, and again, just pick up the third loop. Okay, so that you have the two on there. And what do we do? We bring the back one over the top one. Okay, now it looks a little awkward here, but it will look better. And it's also looking a little awkward because I'm holding it up. Normally you'd have this sitting on your lap and just be whipping it through. So that's all we're going to keep doing is doing the two chains in between. Okay, and we do another chain before we take off that next loop. So that's all I'm doing down here is that same thing I showed you up there. So I'll repeat it one more time. Okay, I've already taken this loop off and put it on there, so now I have to do my chains. I hope that's what they're called, that's what I call them. Okay, and the best thing to do is make sure that your yarn, give yourself a lot of excess, because you don't want it to get tight on you in the middle of it. So, as weird as it sounds, give yourself a heck of a lot of yarn to work with, so that you don't get in the middle of doing this and have it suddenly get really tight and you can't pull it through. I've had that happen too. So, like I said, I've already taken the chain off of here, so we're going to work on this one. <clears throat> Since I took this chain off, what do I have to do? I have to do those chains again, which is where you're just wrapping it. I'm hoping you can see it through, and you're going to pull it through that back loop. And you do that twice. Okay. So we've done it twice, and then what we do is we pick up the next stitch. Okay. 
So we have the two again, like as you can see the two on here, and then take the back one over the top one. Okay, and you're going to do that all the way around until you get to the end. So I'm going to stop right now and finish it till I get to the very end, and then I'll come back and show you how to totally okay, finish it. I'm back, I'm just finishing up the last couple stitches, doing that same method of doing the two chains in between. Now because you're so close to the end, and I'll show you in a second here, because you're so close to the end, I've only got those two left, go ahead, oops, I lost my thing, go ahead and get some scissors and cut yourself a little bit of a tail, so just go, and then because you don't going to need the whole thing of yarn right now. So, I just got to finish up here, okay, I might have actually did too many chains in that one because I, oh, oh, oh. And at times it likes to fight me, so just hang on one second. Okay. Some days you just wonder why things don't want to cooperate, and that's what's happening right now. Alright. So I'm getting I'm almost to the end. So again, like I said, I'm taking the back one over the top, like that, and then creating the two chains. Just make sure, like I said, that you give yourself enough of a tail to still be able to do those two chains. So you may want to cut a little more, like maybe 12 inches or so when you get down to the last two. Because it's better to have too much yarn on there than like not enough. I've had that happen where I cut it too short and it kind of can frustrate you because you're like, I didn't get myself enough room. Okay, so now I'm on the last stitch. This is the last one I'm going to take off. So, put it on the hook. Okay, and you don't need your loom anymore. Okay, and you're going to take the back over the top and then what I do is I grab the tail and I put it on the loop and then I pull it through and I pull it tight. Now it might look a little messed up because I actually did three chains there that's why that one looks weird and I got it caught one so yeah that's why that one looks weird but this is pretty much what's gonna look like when it's cast off. Now it looks a little weird because obviously it's not that big of a piece um, but that's all you do to kinda give it the same stretch on this side because this is the side that we started with and this is the side we cast off if you look it gives you that stretch basically so that it's not a really tight stitch like I like I said I've done before um, and now you're gonna say the best thing to do with this technique is to practice on the little loom because the last thing you want to do is I've been working on this loom and have your project pretty much done and then go casting it off and then mess up because you're not used to doing the method and then you'll feel really bad if you spend four or five days making a blanket and you messed up the casting off so just practice on this, you know, because it doesn't take that much fabric. Like I said, I only did a couple inches down just to practice it. That's why it still has like a little bit of a curl just because it's small. And then actually with this, it's, this is wide enough if you want to. Heck, you could turn it into a wristband or something. Or you could just roll it up and do something with it. But it's still cute. Now, I did originally do this on the big loom. This is how the big one, this is how I started. This was my starting up here for a babe blanket that I was going to do that I decided I didn't want to do blue and white. So I actually already casted this off to remember how to do it because I, I hadn't done flat panels in a, a little bit of a while so I wanted to practice to make sure I remembered how to do it. So I did do this one so you can kind of see if I hold it back that it gives you that stretch and if it didn't have the chains in between what it would actually do is this part would be low but then this top part would be curled in like a little bit and just kind of ruins the effect of it. But, I do have to say something funny, is if you want to, practice on the big loom. Make yourself a strip of two or three inches down, and then cast it off. And if you do a two-tone thing like this, where you have your white and your blue, then you're going to be like, well, okay, I'm going to be stuck with this. What do I do? I mean, well, it could be like a little scarf. But what I actually found, which was funny, because I rolled it up. I'm going, okay, let me roll this up because I can use it for something or whatever. I was like, I'll just roll it up and get it out of my way. So I'm just rolling it and I had my four-year-old daughter looking at me. So I rolled it all up like this. And then I looked at it. What does it look like to you? A cupcake. And what's even funnier if you look up close is because you wrapped it, it actually looks like somebody had frosted in the cupcake with the swirls. So what I'm actually going to do with this piece is I'm actually going to try to attach it together here and have myself a little cupcake and then put a little pom-pom on top that's red or you know to be like a cherry or candy on top so it actually looks really cute to make it cupcakes off of using the big loom and going down about probably about to there like four or five inches and then wrapping it up and I'm gonna see if it'll actually work to sew off the side 
and have myself a cupcake. So that's how you cast off on the big uh, the rectangle looms. Like I said, practice on your little one if you want to, or do a small like strip on this to practice first before you actually do your baby blanket or the wrap or shawl or whatever else you're going to do on it. Because like I said, you don't want to spend four or five days or whatever long it takes to do the baby blanket and then cast it off and realize the cast off didn't work right. So I hope that helps. Um, you can play around with it too. I do two of those things in between each peg, but let me see, as you can see, there was one, let me see if I can find it again, over here that I did three. So play around on the little one, see if you like doing one, two, or three chains in between. Just make sure, probably at least two chains, but try it out on the big loom for maybe three and see if it works better for you. You basically just want it to have that kind of stretch at the end like the top has. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be preparing another video soon.